Hello, in this two-part video series, we will look at the art and skill of reconditioning pathology pots. First of all, what is a pathology pot? A pot is an organ demonstrating signs of disease preserved in a clear container. Pots are used in universities and medical schools around the world to teach medical sciences. Here is an example of a heart with vegetations on the aortic valve, illustrating a case of infective endocarditis. Here is the anatomy of a pathology pot. We have the specimen, which is surrounded by clear fixative solution, and this is encased in a sealed transparent perspex container. Here is an example of a pot that is upside down, and this is the base. And here is a bottom view looking downwards at the base. You may notice these interesting looking areas here, which I will explain later. So over time, there may be air spaces or bubbles accumulating within the specimen pot, or the preservative can become discolored, or sometimes the specimen can shed small bits of tissue into the fluid. Let's look at the basic steps in reconditioning pots. First, the pots are washed externally, and then a small hole is drilled into the base. The preservative fluid is siphoned out using a pump. The pots are then washed internally, and they are refilled. We will look at these five steps in the current video in part one. And in the next part, we will continue to look at the steps of standing, removing bubbles, chopping up the container with preservative fluid, sealing the hole, and sealing the specimen base. So let's get started. The first step is washing, and for this we simply take a clean cloth, dip it in water, and thoroughly wipe all the sides of the specimen container. After cleaning all the surfaces of the specimen container, we then dry the cloth and dry the container. Once dried, it is ready for drilling. Before drilling, we have to turn the specimen container upside down so that the base is facing up. And for small pots like this, we can actually stabilize this manually with a firm grip However, for larger specimens, it may need a vice clamp. So we drill a hole through and through, through the full thickness of the base. And the next step is then to insert tubing from the suction pump into the specimen container and this is how we drain the discolored preservative fluid. After this, we can suction all the fluid out of the container and this helps us to get rid of any discolored fluid and sometimes also some debris that has fallen into the fluid. The next step is then to pump clean fluid into the container, as you can see here, so that we can gently rinse the internal contents of the container, as you can see here. And this may require several rounds. Sometimes the fluid gets a little bit cloudy and so this is washed until the fluid runs relatively clear. So again, it may take several rounds of suctioning and pumping fluid in. Mm -hmm. 
When we are sure that we have done sufficient rounds of cleaning, we can then refill the specimen container with a fresh batch of preservative fluid. We generally do not fill it all the way to the top, but close to the top so that it just covers the specimen and this allows bubbles to rise to the surface over time. So we have seen the steps of washing, drilling, suctioning, washing the internal contents of the specimen container and refilling the specimen container with fresh preservative fluid. In the next video, we will look at the remaining steps to completion of the reconditioning process. Thank you.